If you're a working person, you've no doubt experienced the sensation of being a cog in a machine at some point. The feeling of detachment and disconnection in your daily life. Living for the weekend because the majority of your life is spent toiling for your capitalist overlord. Barely making enough to scrape by while your boss grows rich off the back of your labour. The little time you can find outside of work is your only opportunity to truly live. Marx summed this up in 1844 when he wrote that The worker only feels himself outside his work and in his work he feels outside himself. He feels at home when he's not working and when he is working he does not feel at home. His labour is therefore not voluntary but coerced. It is forced labour. As a result therefore, man, the worker, only feels himself freely active in his animal functions. Eating, drinking, procreating or at most in his dwelling and in dressing up, etc. And in his human functions at work, he no longer feels himself to be anything but an animal. Here Marx is referring to the concept of alienation or estrangement. A point that hits hard for a lot of working people who experience this sensation of being chewed up and spit out day after day by the capitalist system that we're living under. It's also a topic that's been heavily debated among Marxists for reasons that'll become clear later on in the video. So, what is alienation? What are workers alienated from exactly? And why is this a subject of such intense, heated debate among Marxists? Let's find out. Welcome to Socialism 101, a series designed to help educate people with no prior knowledge on the basics of socialism and communism from an ML and MLM perspective with short and easily digestible videos. If this sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell below. If you'd like to support Marxist educational content, then toss a euro or a dollar per month over on Patreon to help keep this series going. If you're not in a position to support financially, you can help out a lot by just sharing these videos around on social media. Now, when talking about alienation, this broadly refers to detachment, estrangement or disconnection from something. Alienation has occurred in various ways under all class societies, including slave society and feudalism. But the young Karl Marx argued in his Economic and Philosophical Manuscripts of 1844 that alienation presents most intensely under the capitalist mode of production. And he claimed that it occurs in four main ways. 1. Alienation from the product of labour. 2. Alienation from the act of production. 3. Alienation from humanity's species being. And 4. Alienation from other people. Let's take a look at each of these one by one. First, workers are alienated from the product of their labour. Workers produce goods. The capitalist then takes away these goods from the worker and sells them to realise a profit, creating an immediate disconnection between the worker and the product of their labour. As labour power is purchased at a lower cost than the value that labour itself produces, the worker can never afford to purchase all the products that they have created back from the capitalist. The products of labour are thus permanently detached or alienated from the worker who produced them. To demonstrate this, look at the clothes that you're wearing. Who made them? You likely don't know the workers who produced them, nor do the workers know you. The product of labour is detached or alienated from the worker who has produced it. Instead, you'll likely just see a brand of some kind, demonstrating the capitalist's appropriation of the product of the worker's labour and revealing that it's been detached or alienated from the workers themselves. Furthermore, the workers who created these clothes will never be able to purchase all these products that they've created. For example, workers in Bangladesh making 50 cents per hour would never be able to buy back all the high-end consumer goods that they're creating that are sold in the global north for hundreds of euros or dollars. Alienation from the product of labour is thus a permanent feature of the capitalist mode of production. Second, workers are alienated from the act of production itself insofar as the fact that workers don't freely engage in production of their own accord, but they instead labour in order to gain a wage so that they may survive. If they don't work, they can't afford food, shelter, clothing or any of life's necessities. They consequently sell labour power to capitalists not freely of their own accord, but are forced to do so as a result of economic coercion. In selling their labour power, workers' labour then belongs to someone else, the capitalists. The labour, the act of producing, becomes external to the worker, it's estranged or alienated. The external character of labour for the worker appears in the fact that it is not his own, but someone else's. That it does not belong to him. That in it he belongs, not to himself, but to another. The worker's activity is not his spontaneous activity. It belongs to another. It is the loss of his self. Left to our own devices, we could engage in the kind of labour that we found most useful both individually and collectively, whether that be in producing art or helping to build homes for those in need. 
Instead, we perform the labour demanded of us by capitalists who seek nothing more than the realisation of profit to the detriment of all else, determined by the whims of the market and the anarchy of production. So not only are workers alienated from the act of production under capitalism due to the economic coercion which forces them to sell their labour power, they're also alienated by what the capitalist forces them to produce, whether that's the shoes that are made in the sweatshop or the burger that's prepared in the restaurant. Neither are produced in accordance with the desires of the workers, but instead in accordance with the requirements of capital. As workers don't control the means of production, we find ourselves being controlled by the means of production, transformed into little more than an appendage of a larger process of production over which workers have no control. We become merely cogs in someone else's money-making machine. Third, in his early writings, Marx claims that workers are alienated from our species being or species essence. Marx suggested that there was a human essence that separated humans from other animals. The essence or spirit of humanity, humanity's species being, was that humans engage in labour and produce beyond our immediate needs, while other animals produce only what they need directly. Humans don't simply produce shelter and grow food. We also create art and write songs and make spaceships to send people to the moon. Marx explains that an animal only produces what it immediately needs for itself or its young. It produces one-sidedly, whilst man produces universally. An animal produces only under the dominion of immediate physical need, whilst man produces even when he is free from physical need and only truly produces in freedom therefrom. He suggested that this production that occurs beyond physical necessity is what allows people to transcend other animals and become truly human, to fully self-actualise. It is just in his work upon the objective world, therefore, that man really proves himself to be a species being. This production is his act of species life. Through this production, nature appears as his work and his reality. The object of labour is, therefore, the objectification of man's species life, for he duplicates himself not only as in consciousness intellectually, but also actively in reality and therefore he sees himself in a world that he has created. So if workers are unable to produce freely beyond physical necessity, they're detached or alienated from the defining feature of human nature itself according to early Marx. Alienation from the product of labour and the act of production, as mentioned earlier, means workers are alienated from humanity and become no more than any other animals, robots or simple cogs in a machine. Estranged labour, therefore, turns man's species being, both nature and his intellectual species power, into a being alien to him and a means of his individual existence. It estranges man from his own body, from nature as it exists outside him, from his spiritual essence his human existence. Now, you may be surprised to hear Karl Marx writing about humanity's spiritual essence, particularly if you're more familiar with Marx's later writing, which has a much more detached, scientific, economically focused tone. Keep this point in mind, we're going to circle back to it after discussing the fourth type of alienation. Now, fourth, under the capitalist mode of production, workers are alienated from other workers, or more broadly, people are alienated from other people. Connecting this to the three previous forms of alienation already discussed, Marx writes that an immediate consequence of the fact that man is estranged from the product of his labour, from his life activity, from his species being, is the estrangement of man from man. When man confronts himself, he confronts the other man. What applies to a man's relation to his work, to the product of his labour and to himself, also holds of a man's relation to the other man and to the other man's labour and object of labour. However, alienation from other people is perhaps demonstrated a bit more concretely in Marx's later concept of commodity fetishism, which reveals the way in which the commodities that we encounter on the market mystify us and obscure the real human relations which are involved in the creation and distribution of these products. For example, it's generally impossible for us to know the workers in the sweatshops and the working conditions under which the products we encounter on the market have been created. The worker who produced the product is detached from it, and we as consumers purchase these detached products. This means that we as consumers are also detached or alienated from the workers themselves who produced it. Thus, the real social relations between people ourselves are hidden, and in its place appear to us merely relations between things, the money in our pocket and the product on the shelf. In this way, the capitalist mode of production makes us detached, disconnected, estranged and alienated from one another.
Now, I mentioned earlier that alienation is a contentious topic that's subject to a lot of debate among Marxists. The main point of debate is around the concept of species being and a spiritual essence of humanity which Marx used as the basis for other forms of alienation under capitalism in his early writing. This will seem completely out of place if you've come to Marx through his later work which roots itself firmly in materialism rather than idealist notions of spirits or any kind of transhistorical metaphysical human nature that stands outside of history, detached from the objective material conditions of any given epoch. In fact, this contrast is so stark that Marx's work is often divided into pre-1845 early Marx and post-1845 late Marx. Early Marx is generally characterised as bearing heavy remnants from the left Hegelian tradition and dialectical idealism rather than dialectical materialism. Consequently, early Marx appears to harbour strong humanist sentiments that rely on some kind of essential human nature or inner spirit that exists outside of history, independent of material conditions. Conversely, late Marx is firmly rooted in the science of historical materialism that situates matter as the starting point for all that exists rather than spirit, breaking decisively from the remnants of bourgeois ideology that were present in early Marx's writing. The rupture from early Marx's humanism occurs specifically in the 1845 Theses on Feuerbach when Marx writes that Feuerbach resolves the religious essence into the human essence, but the human essence is no abstraction inherent in each single individual. In its reality, it is the ensemble of the social relations. Feuerbach, who does not enter upon a criticism of this real essence, is consequently compelled to abstract from the historical process and to fix the religious sentiment as something by itself and to presuppose an abstract, isolated human individual. Essence, therefore, can be comprehended only as genus, as an internal dumb generality which naturally unites the many individuals. So, as we can see, Marx here breaks from his own concept of an abstract species being that he wrote so much about just one year prior in his economic and philosophical manuscripts, instead moving to understanding phenomena as developing dialectically as part of historical processes rooted in material conditions and social relations at all times. This was an epistemological break from the remnants of bourgeois idealism present in Marx's earlier writing, and marks a qualitative leap forward into the development of a truly proletarian ideology. So where does this leave the concept of alienation when its basis on human species being is removed? Well, there may have been rupture from the idealist aspects of it, but there's also continuity. Marx returns to alienation in the Grundrisse in the late 1850s and speaks about it solely in a technical sense of detachment from the product of labour, the act of production and from other people, where in his early writings he would connect each of these to a sense of disconnection from humanity's inner spirit. The concept of alienation is also present this way throughout Capital, though arguably in a de-emphasised form, operating behind the scenes while Marx discusses alienated commodities and commodity fetishism, alienation as it pertains to the working day, the way in which workers become the appendage of the productive process in their extremely specialised positions within the production line, and so on. So the concept of alienation clearly persists throughout Marx's later writing, but its humanist basis upon the species being, human nature or inner spirituality is dropped in favour of a scientific, historical materialist basis. Today we've taken a look at Marx's concept of alienation under capitalism and how it developed over the course of his life's work. We began by looking at alienation from the product of labour, which persists throughout both early Marx and late Marx's writing. We proceeded to look at alienation from the act of production, which also persists. We then looked at alienation from species being, which is dropped from late Marx's writing following 1845's Theses on Feuerbach. And we then looked at alienation from others, connecting it to Marx's related concept of commodity fetishism. Lastly, we highlighted the development of the theory of alienation from its early idealist and humanistic basis upon species being, or humans' inner spirituality, in texts like the Philosophical and Economic Manuscripts of 1844, to its later materialist manifestation appearing in the Grundrisse, Capital, and other late Marx works both explicitly and implicitly. One more thing. The debate around alienation is largely divided along the lines of humanist Marxists and anti-humanist Marxists. For clarity's sake, I want to acknowledge that the form of alienation emphasised in this video would fall into the latter camp, rejecting idealist conceptions of spirit, species being and so on. Consequently, the versions of alienation described here, despite using young Marx's categorizations, have been presented as more in line with the positions maintained by late Marx, the Marx who wrote Capital, the Gundries and so on, which don't rely on species being and instead focus primarily on the material realm. There's a reading and resources list in the description box below that I strongly recommend diving into if you're interested in learning about the different positions on alienation and the humanism versus anti-humanism divide. Make sure to have a read of Louis Althusser's Marxism and Humanism from 1964 to clarify that rupture between early Marx and late Marx. 
If you're looking for podcasts and YouTube videos that dive into this further, Alison and Brett from the Red Menace podcast do an excellent job at making the case for these different positions on alienation in their episode on the philosophical and economic manuscripts of 1844. As does David Harvey in his podcast The Anti-Capitalist Chronicles Alienation Part 1. And of course, the Marxist Projects video here on YouTube, The Fundamentals of Marx Alienation, all of which are linked in the description box below. Right, thanks very much for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful in one way or another, even if you've now got more questions than you arrived with. Thanks especially to the supporters on Patreon who persevere against all odds and continue to make these videos possible. Thank you Ian McShay, Hugh Gopnik, Borku Gorilla, Ryan Hodgson, Soup, Madeline, Sonic232, Sagan, Michaela Schmid, Christian Napales, Brian Ruiz, Alfonso Dingo Torres, Megalova, Rock Artist, Grangry, Todd Sprang, Nike De Sage, Zakasi, Anglo Irish Bolshevik, Amy Schmidt, Eli Leslie, Thomas Rossum Wood, Jason Schmidt, Del Seabold, Train H13, Miosifer, Hunter Johnson, Donald Quisleva, Sixty Vialen, Kale Marx, Roja, MLM in Practice, Eric Lindahl, ZK Goody, Coil Rap, Doc Toma, Iope Farah, Becky, Pastor Schubert, A Mouthwash Bottle, Mr. Miyamoto, Coil King, Reverend Lon Nom Hollywood, Wonderbad, JT Chapman, Jose, Joseph Shepard, Jack Schneidman, Comrade Amara, Wealth for the 99%, Spoop, and Trailer Park Communist. Cheers everyone, August Longafoe.